Okay, so we have those all attached. They're all attached this way. So now we're stuck with this. We have to fold this up like we did before. So we're going to take some of these little short pieces that I pulled out of my other stuff here. And I'm just going to measure them up. They're only, like I said, an inch. So I'm going to cut. I want to do want four of them. Actually, I want, yeah, I want four. And then the outside ones we'll measure as we do them. Because they can end up being just a little bit different. So we're going to cut up for these and don't worry about it if you they end up being a little bit long it's okay so again you want to cut the angles on them so when they fold up you don't have to worry about it so we're going to put I put them on two and two so I'm going to put this and see this sticks up a little bit farther Sticks up farther than my chipboard, so I'm just going to come back here. I'm going to cut it off, and then I'm going to angle it a little bit. So sometimes I don't even care if they're cut to the right size because I can just do that with each one of them and be done with it. So I'm going to I put one here, and then I'm going to put one on this this end of the long flap, and then I'm going to flip it to the other side, and I'm going to do the same thing. So we're going to put this here and here, and I forgot to angle that. So let's angle this before I put this on especially since I cut them to be the size they need to be. And then I'm going to put one on this here and then down on the other end of the long side. So there and there. Okay, so I have, oops, it doesn't matter. So I put these two I put on the long side, I put this one on the long side, and then this one I put on the short side. But it doesn't matter because we're going to fold them up and fold them in just like we did for the rest of the box. So I'm going to go through and peel off the backings. Okay, so peeled all those off. I need to angle this one, and I need to angle this one, because I didn't angle that one either, so I need to angle this one down there. Angled, 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 angled. Okay, so now we're just going to fold them up, fold them in, fold them up, and just tack them like we did the other, just so they come and meet, just like that. Your open corner should be open, like where we put the glossy accents in it. going to oops I didn't get that stuck in there before okay come on okay, there we go okay so there's our the top so now we're going to do this top I didn't get that stuck in there very straight Okay, so we're going, I'm, again, I'm going to take, because this is the top, this could take a lot of, a lot of tension with things being set on top of it and getting bumped around, etc. So again, I want to do the glossy accents on here. And then while this one sits and dries, I don't know what I did with my baby wipe, while this one sits and dries, we'll work on the, the oven itself again. So, but it doesn't take, you'll, you probably have noticed by now that with the other one, it doesn't take very long for it to dry. Whoop, well, that was good. Make a mess. Okay, and then we're going to do the sides again. I 
with the shaking going on. So let's smooth these out a little bit. You don't want them big and bumpy and lumpy. That's the reason why I keep smoothing them out because you want your tape to go on and stick nice and smooth so there's no lumps and bumps in them. There we go. Okay, so there's the top. So now I'm going to set this off to the side, out of the way. And we're going to pull the oven back into this end of view. Okay, my little scraps. We're going to need those again before it's all said and done. Let's get this. Okay, so let's pull this guy back into the picture. And I've cut some strips already. So he's nice and dry and he's nice and sturdy. You, if you see here, the corners don't even give. You can put a little bit of pressure and it doesn't give, which is what you want. So we're all good. So now we're just basically on this. Right now we're going to cover um, all of the edges with strips. So... I pre-cut a bunch of mine, so I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. And these go edge to edge, so I I, I have not angled any of these because they're going to be kind, they're going to be covered up by the next one anyway. So it's not a big deal. So I put this one here, and then we're going to come up here, and we're going to put one here to cover that. I didn't put any glossy accents in there. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and put some more. That's one place I didn't put the glossy accents at. I'm going to put some there. Okay. I did that pretty good. Hardly any extra. Okay. Then I'm going to take this one. I'm not even going to touch that yet because it needs to, I do need it to dry or I'll make a mess. So I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to put one across the top up here, all the way across the top. And on the top up there, I am going to, because it goes on the ends, it's going to wrap around to the inside. I am going to cut an angle on it. So we're going to put this one. there and then I it's on there but then I always take before I actually seal it down on the inside run your bone folder across the top because if it's at all crooked or whatever you don't want any air bubbles underneath there so run your bone folder across the top and then smooth it down inside there and running the bone folder across the top once it's stuck down will create a nice flat edge across there makes it really really nice to be that way Okay, so I'm waiting for that to dry. I'm going to go to the back, and I'm going to do the same thing on the back. I'm going to put this down there. I'm not even going to cut this at an angle. It doesn't go on the inside, and it's going to be covered. Edges are going to be covered. It's going to be just fine. So there's that one. This. We're going to go to the side while it's upside down, and I'm going to do this. This doesn't cut off right, so let's just, I'll just cut an angle. Yeah. side Okay. 
and then I'm going to go to the top and cover those edges too the same way. Uh, do I want to do that first? Yes, I do. Be sure and burnish down all your strips and your edges and stuff because it really does make a difference in your overall ending product. Whoops. Across the top of the back. Now, when you go to fold these down, if it binds on that side over there at all, just take your scissors and cut yourself, cut your um, your angle a little bit more. And then it won't, it'll go down nice and smooth. Sometimes we have a tendency to have it just a tad bit too long and then it doesn't want to go down and, and be nice and smooth for you. And all those things play an issue when you're building boxes. Okay, um, now I need to go on the outside corners. So top to bottom here. Let me see, what do I have here? Some are long, some are short. Is this a short one? Okay, that's a good one, and that's a good one. So let's take, start with these. And I'm going to go ahead and angle. Okay, one, two there. Now, when it comes to these guys, because you have this opening, your strip is going to run from the bottom to the top. So, this is bottom to top. So, what I do, go ahead and cut not much of an angle. So, I go ahead and I peel off one side and stick it down on the outside. Then we're going to go back and we're going to cut... We're going to make little snips. Oops, see, and I'm too tall here. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this down this way. There, because it was too tall. So I trimmed it that way. And then I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to cut this at an angle. I have my angle there. So now that we have it this way, burnish this down. Kind of burnish your corner a little bit, too. It's going to wrap around, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to snip right here because I want this to fold in. I want that to go there, and then I'm going to come down here and snip. So this will fold in like this. This will adhere here, and this will adhere right here. And you probably, I know it's going to be hard to see this. Let me see if I can 
there. So see this piece here is going to stick here. This is going to stick up here and this is going to wrap around this way. Don't wrap it around just yet. Go ahead and cut a little bit of an angle on these pieces that are going to adhere flat down so that they don't get in your way. Okay. And you're going to do the same to the other side. And the reason I'm telling you not to stick them, not to peel and stick it down yet, because I want this strip on here first and this strip on here first before we go wrapping it around to do it. So again, go ahead and put this out and stick this on the outside here. And then again, kind of lay it over and hold it with your scissors. Just snip it in, snip it in so that this will wrap inside like this. And then come back, pull these out and just go ahead and cut a little bit of an angle on that piece. And then a little bit of an angle on this bottom piece there, just like that. Okay, leave them open. Then let's go ahead with this, and this is too long, but actually it's not too long because we have a little bit in there. So if we're going to take this, um, I'm going to only cut an angle on one half. I'm only going to cut an angle on one half of, of my strip. I'm going to leave this square and I'm going to angle that in and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to angle the same side. And so I got angles here and here and straight edges here. I want this to go from edge to edge this way. And then I want the, the angled piece to go inside there to cover that up. And again, it's binding. It's binding right in there. You probably can't see it very well. but it's, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that angle and I'm actually going to cut it at a, more of an angle. And I'm going to do it on both ends because I can see the other side was starting to do it too. So then that will go in there. So we'll go here, here, and then it doesn't bind it all in there. Then what you can do is you can take that same piece and you can put it up here, flip it over and see if it's going to be the same. Mine isn't, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I was going to cut it to fit, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to put this on here. And I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this in the camera so I don't go out of focus. Okay, so I'm going to, I push this part of seal down here. And then I'm going to put this piece down inside. So it's going to wrap around inside. This will give you a real nice finished piece here. And then I'm going to do the same thing up here. This is too short. I need a longer piece. So let's just take this and go. Well, you know what? Is it too short? Maybe not. Because that's just going to wrap around it and it's going to wrap. No, you know what? It's going to work. Because this is going to wrap around. No, I don't want to take a chance of it not looking right. I'd rather take the extra time and do it this way. Okay, that goes edge to edge. So fold it. And again, only cut one side, leave one side straight, cut the other side at an angle. Put this on here and make sure you wrap it around. Yeah, now that's going to have to come way in. There. a little bit more. There we go. I had it cut too long. That was the problem. Okay, so we've got that. I'm going to try tucking in this part here first instead of Okay, so this one I went ahead and stuck the inside in first. to put this up here this way. Okay. 
that just gives you a real nice finished look that's your drawer casing and that just gives it a real nice finished look for stuff then we're going to take these peel the tape off of them and stick them down so this top piece is going to come down on top of there this is wrapped all the way around to the inside and then this piece here comes right down and sticks onto there so our piece of paper designer paper we put across there is going to you know cover this edge here so it's no worry and then we're going to do the same thing here oops i didn't get them at all okay so i'm going to smush this down i'm going to smush this all the way around and then i'm going to smush this down and once you get it done you're going to come back in here there so you have now covered all of your edges is now covered with strips which is what you're going to see when you get your paper put on it okay let me clean this mess off of here real quick there we go okay so there's our box it's done we're ready to build the drawer on it so let's set it off to the side let's go back to our lid so by now see the lid is dry nice and dry no worries so on this one we're going to take and i'm going to go ahead and put these pieces that corner pieces on first and i'm not even going to trim them to size sometimes this works out even better than having to try to worry about it I'll put it on and it's got some sticking up there and I just take my scissors and I cut there and I cut there and then I don't have to worry about cutting those little tiny yes they're cut straight across but that's okay they're gonna get covered up as long as they don't overhang they're okay so let's do that one let's do another one Okay, again, just cut this off. Make another one. Find some of the shortest ones I've got here. One more short one. This looks good. Okay, so we'll just cut off this, and then we'll just cut off this. There. So those corners are all protected now. So now we're going to cover these edges and that's too short I don't know what I got going over here but yeah that's what I get for pre-cutting them I cut them too short how about these guys are these going to be because I don't I forget when you cut these when you pre-cut them you end up you cut them the size of your chipboard but that's not really the size because when you by the time you add the distance on them it ends up being they end up being a little bit longer because you want these pieces to literally go from outside edge to outside edge well when these pieces are six and three quarters that takes you to the edge there but it doesn't take you out past where you put the tape at so that's the reason that I usually don't go ahead and cut I thought I was being gonna save myself some time that's not gonna happen so we're just going to have to go back and recut them, which is, I mean, it's not that big of an issue. I can always take and use those pieces somewhere else down the road. 
So it doesn't doesn't make any difference. This one, at least my edge, the ends seem to be okay. It's the long pieces I seem to have goofed on. And when I cut an angle on my papers, I do not cut through the corner itself. I cut to the corner, if that makes any sense. If you cut through the corner, then you're actually taking off a little bit of the length of your strip. Unless you've cut your strip to allow you to do that. So now I'm going to take this corner to corner. Okay. So I need three for this size. Yeah, see, the, the, they're only off maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so, but I want to have full coverage. I'm kind of anal that way. And I honestly believe that any corner cutting shows in the end product. So I don't want to do that. So I just cut four this way. And the reason I'm doing four is because we have to do the top side of this too. Now this one's too long. <laughs> That's all right. So see, instead of cutting through the corner, all the way through that corner, I cut up to it. So it's a little square right there on the very tip. You probably, there you go, you can see it right there better. There's a little square right there. Because I cut to the corner, not through the corner. See, there's a little square on that one too. The tip of it is square. So that's, that's how I do those. Check them before you go peeling off your tape. My scissors need to be cleaned up. There. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we have all the four raw edges covered. Now all we have to do is cover these edges here. So we want to, yeah, see, this is not going to, although that will work. I'm good with this. So I'm going to angle them just a tiny bit.
and then the end pieces. Oops. Okay. long right here I can see now before I go do in the back here I want to see I'm thinking I'm not going to put a strip across one long top edge. There's three sides there. I'm going to leave this strip off of this back edge because each layer really adds more and more to a project, even though you don't think it will. And I need to glue, I need to glue the top, this piece down. And then what I'll do is I'll put a strip that just goes right here and covers the gap there. So I'm going to take my glue. And I'm going to glue down be kind of generous with the glue there. Glue this on here. And I'm going to turn it on its side like this with nothing, make sure nothing's underneath it, not even a piece of paper. And then push this down so that everything is straight. Your edges match up. And then this part, you're going to want to let it set as well to dry. So we're going to let this, we're going to just going to set this off to the side and let this sit. And then we're going to come back and we're going to put strips on here. I'm going to put a strip in here. I'm going to put a strip here. And we're going to put a strip here where these two go together at. This I'm not worried about. Although, you know what I think I will? I think we probably will put a strip that actually wraps around this edge. So you don't see this corner here. You can see on this one, just tiny bit right there. Just hardly, you can, looks like a little hole that you can see from where, um, when you put the paper on it. So I think we will go ahead and put, let's measure this thing. Let's see if we're, make sure I'm not going downhill any. That looks like two and a quarter. Uh, it's downhill just a little bit, but that's, I don't know that it's really going to be noticeable, or is it downhill? Let's see. Somewhere around here, I actually have a little mini level. Oh, no, they're perfect. They're fine. It was just the way I was holding it. So I'm going to leave this dry like this for a while. And in the meantime, we're going to take, these are our inserts. So while everything dries, let's clean up some of this mess here. While everything dries, we're going to take, and I always, when I make a box, if I have a lid that goes on, I always put these inserts in them because it makes your lid close properly. It can even make a, a mistake become okay. So these guys are going to be, they are actually going to go down in here and they will stick up outside of the box a little bit. Sometimes about a quarter of an inch. See it sticks up out of the box? A little bit right here. Um, and so that way when you put your lid on, when you put this guy on, they go up inside the lid and it makes it sit nice and square. So that's the purpose of these. Now, I usually get... What I do with these is the tops of them, one long side on the top, I will take and I will put, and these I leave square. I don't angle these at all. I leave them square because I, I want them to, when I put my paper on them, I want it to be square. So I'm going to put this on here 
And I'm going to come back here and I'm just going to cut the edge straight. Again, whenever I'm wrapping something, I, I do the old burnish down trick and then fold this over. Stick it down. After you get these made and you get your box done and you put these in, if you decide they stick up higher than you want, all you have to do is trim a little bit of your chipboard off the bottom. I believe I did that with these other ones because I think I took almost like 3 sixteenths to an, um, yeah, maybe even just an eighth of an inch. Anywhere from an eighth to 3 sixteenths I took off of the ones I did put in the first oven because just kind of didn't want them to stand up that far. So it's a person, it's your own personal preference. And if you're making a hinge lid, they work awesome for making your lid close properly. So we're going to do this. So these inserts are, there's two of them, six and three quarters by four and three quarters. And then there's two of them that are four and three quarters by four and five eighths. So the four, and, and since it's an eighth of an inch, it's going to be easy to do the wrong edge with your covering your strips. So. Oh, I didn't squeeze this shut. And I do not glue these in until after I put the, these are almost one of the last things I glue in because it hides the back of the brads from the door, the oven door handle. I got to make sure I do this right because these are only an eighth of an inch off so it's really going to be easy to put your strip on the wrong edge. Okay, so there's that. So these guys will go in. You'll put in first. And if you notice, the the front and the back ones are the exact the same size as your chipboard was that you started off with. So they're the six and three quarter inches long. Okay, make sure they go all the way down. These are going to have to be cut shorter. They're too tall. And then the other ones will go in and they'll go right up against it. And it should be very, very snug. These are, I'm going to have to cut these. They're not quite there. So see, there you have your the thing across the top of your box. And you will eventually glue those in. And then when your lid goes on there, it makes it sit nice and snug somewhere. What am I doing wrong here? There. It's just real snug. And it is until things get... Once you set it on there and leave it on there for a while, then it should be good to go. But I will end up cutting those down. I don't want them to be that tall. So, see, we have an oven without a drawer. But I don't want to mess with this too much because of that guy. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take him off. I am going to take these out. And I'm going to trim them down. I don't like them being quite so, quite so tall. So, let's see what I got here. Um, I think I'm going to take an eighth of an inch off. Let's see how this one fits in there. Mm, that's better. Might even go another.
may seem to be just a tad bit. I mean, they should be nice and snug. That make don't if they push your box open any at all. If they tweak your your um. If they make your box, ex, you know, expand out when you put them in, they should be nice and snug. But if they make your box expand out, then you need to trim them off. They're they're just a tad bit too wide. There, that looks better. But I'm almost thinking I even want to go less. So these are going to end up being give me one of these first. So instead, I'm going to make them be four and a half. <laughs> Get out of there. Yep, that's better. I like that much better. Much better. So these are going to end up being four and a half inches tall. Well, they even fit in there better, too. Four and a half. Okay. So when you do these, since these go edge to edge, all the way edge to edge, front and back, then the side ones are a little, are a little bit narrower. So they're the four, that's why they're four and five eighths. And this one is not even too wide. Let's see what it's for. No? Hmm. No, nope, it's in there, okay. Oh, that worked. That's okay. So now my lid should go on even easier. Because, yeah. Yeah. There. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. So there we are. Oops, if I put it on backwards. <laughs> There's the drawer. So the lid goes on this way. There we are. And, yeah. And then these will, like I said, they'll get glued down. But I don't glue them down till after I put my hinge on for my, put your pattern paper on and do what you're going to do for your door so that you can put your brads through it that hold your handle. And then when you put your inserts in them, it goes up against the brads and, and gives them support to help them stay there. It, this isn't an operating door though, so in some ways it doesn't really matter that they go back there, but I would still want them back there just to make them be sturdy. So there we have our oven all except the drawer and papering it so for the drawer what I do I need to get this off before I ruin it um, I measure the inside top and bottom so the inside of this one shows me six and a half tight and six and a half tight so I'm I'm gonna do it like um, gosh six and a half tight tight and I don't want it tight so I'm going to do six and three eighths for my base the bottom of my drawer is going to be six and three eighths so I'm going to cut a piece that is six and three eighths inches wide and then my drawer is four and five eighths deep Four and five eighths deep. Um, so I'm going to do four and four and a half inches deep. No, it's going to leave me an eighth of an inch. Um, four and a half. So I'm going to actually do it like four and nine sixteenths. Because I want it to go inside a little bit so I can, although I don't know, I did this one. It sticks out just a hair. That's okay. That's good. So, yeah. Four. I say this was four and five eighths. Yes, four and five eighths. Four and five eighths. So I did like a sixteenth less. Okay, so this is that. So then, and the, our, the height of our 
we need to put this piece in here so we know because that thickness is going to be in there. So we end up with eye height of 1 and 3 eighths. So um, 1 and 3 eighths. Let's do not 1 and 3 eighths. Let's do 1 and maybe 1 and a quarter. That's an eighth of an inch by the time you said it. Well, no, we already got that. That's okay. We can, I can show you. If we have a problem, I can show you how to fix it. Okay, so I need, and we're going to double these pieces. So I need one, two. So I need four pieces that's one and a quarter by, what was this one? Six and three eighths. So this is six and three eighths. So let's do one and a quarter. So, let's see, and I need to straighten this piece out. So I need four of them that are one and a quarter. So there's one, two, three, Four. Okay, so here I have four pieces that are one and a quarter by six and three eighths. Okay, so then I'm going to take and glue these together because they're doubled. Now the bottom of the drawer I only do a single, and I can show you how with doing only doing a single. If your drawer ends up being kind of out of whack as far as having a big gap at the top or the bottom, you can add another thickness of chipboard to it and take up that distance in it. So I'd rather have a drawer with a little bit of gap at the top than to have a drawer when I get it done that isn't going to fit. Okay, so there's my two pieces. That's the drawer front and the drawer back. Now these two together are a quarter of an inch. So this measurement is well, this was the four and nine sixteenths. So I need to, I'm just going to cut these at, well, four and five, just a hair over a quarter. If you have a problem with your sixteenth of an inch, just a hair over a quarter. So just a hair over a quarter. Halfway between a quarter and an eighth is where that mark would be. And then these need to be one and a quarter inches as well. So there's one, two, three, four. Oops, that's too big. Let's do it again. Four. Okay. And then these guys are going to get glued together as well. So we're having two and two, which four pieces, and we end up with two pieces when we're done. Okay. Now these, I actually sit on top of my drawer, my bottom. They go on top of the drawer bottom. So I'm going to take my glossy accents like we did before, and I'm going to put me a stream across here. And like I said, when you set this down, it needs to be down where you want it to stay. If you try to lift it up and move it, it's just not going to stick. Kind of like that. Except working with black is really, really hard to do. See, and then it'll stick and it'll stay there. We're going to put strips on it too, but this is just the way I actually build my drawers. And then I go back and I put the strips on them.
so it doesn't take much to hold them in place. Then these are going to go inside from inside to inside. Goes inside to inside, and it does fit. So on this one, I put it on here. Whoops, am I making a big mess inside there, aren't I? Okay, so put them, put it around there, and then I go in here this way. And then I hold it together like this, just long enough to get it to seat. And you do want to make sure that it's even out here on this edge. You do want to make sure that it's not, you know, that there's not a big loop sticking out or anything. You want to make sure that it's even. Okay, so there's that one. Now we need to do this one. And make sure that the edge that goes down on your drawer is level and not off. That will change how things work too. Okay, there's that. Come on, get in there. There. Alrighty. Get back in there. There. Whoops, see there? That's how it just floopy zoopies on you. So, let me just go put that back on there. There, in there. I don't know how I managed to do that, but I did. Put this down. Make sure it's square. There we go. I know what I did is I put too much pressure on there when I was holding it in. There. Okay. All right. And that's another way to make sure that it's all level is if you put it on its side and push it down, you know, just in case your bottom sticks up further, then it'll make your the side go even with it. Yeah, seeing this thing is coming apart on me. That's okay. That is okay. I'm just going to put a little bit of stuff in here that will support it because we are covering all these edges with the um, that just kind of gives you a little bit more strength. I've actually built drawers with this glossy accents and not papered them and had them just last forever. But I do like the way it looks when they're papered so, so we're going to do we need four of this. Actually, we need one, two, three for each side. So we need six. One, two, three for that side. And then we need, oh, look, they're perfectly. One, two, three for that side. And this is coming off again. Let's put some more. Glossy accents in there. I've never made such a mess with glossy accents as I have today. That's okay. Okay. So we need three of this size for that side over there and three of the smaller side for the other end. So you want six of each one. So three and three here, and that should leave me with these here. I had some shorter strips, um, so that's what I was using. Okay, put the lid on this glue so it doesn't dry out on me. And I'm gonna run out of time, so I'm gonna stop the video and I'll be back to finish this drawer.